You're listening to Soundside. I'm Libby Denkman. NASA announced its next batch of potential astronauts this week. Out of 8,000 applicants, just 10 were chosen to attend the two-year training program. And when those astronaut candidates complete their training, they will be eligible for missions to low Earth orbit, the Moon, and Mars. And one of those astronaut candidates is from Sammamish, and she's here with me now, Lauren Edgar. Congratulations. It's great to meet you. How excited are you today uh, to be chosen as one of these very select few candidates? Thank you so much for having me. I am incredibly excited to be here. This is really a dream come true, you know, something that I've been interested in since childhood. And I just can't believe that I now have the opportunity to be a part of this class. And you grew up on the east side, we should say. You went to Skyline High School. So when did the dream of being an astronaut become a big deal to you? When do you first remember thinking, I want to do that? I want to go up in space. Yeah, so this dream started when I was in second grade, and I was actually going to Discovery Elementary School at the time and had the chance to see a space shuttle launch of the Discovery Space Shuttle when I was in Florida. And I have this photo of me wearing my Discovery Elementary sweatshirt, attending the launch. Um, But that moment was really important to me because I realized there were people on board and they were leaving this planet. And I think in that moment, I decided I wanted to know what else is out there. And that set me on this path to, you know, pursuing a career in planetary science and exploring other planets. Did the science bug get you then? I mean, was it after that you were like, I'm, I'm doing this. This is this science is my thing. I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to pursue that path. I knew I was interested in space exploration, but I actually started out more engineering. Um, But I will say growing up in the Pacific Northwest, I certainly had an appreciation for the outdoors. I just didn't know that geology was something that I could study until I went off to college. And so, uh, you know, initial plans were, you know, go the engineering route and then realize, like, I love some of these big picture science questions that we can answer when we, you know, go explore other planets. Yeah, we should say you have a background as a geologist. You worked for NASA for nearly two decades with the Mars Science Laboratory and then the Artemis mission. So why make the jump from, you know, being safe on the ground, getting the rock samples delivered and and being able to kind of go through uh, the data and information that you get here to I want to be actually, you know, going into space? Like what will that add, do you think, to your ability to understand and and, uh, further your scientific career? Great question. I mean, I think we're still working towards that same end goal, whether we are scientists and engineers that are contributing to these missions or whether they're the astronauts themselves that someday may get to walk on the surfaces of these planets. Uh, We have the same questions that we're trying to answer and the same mission priorities, but I'm just really excited to now try and serve in this new role as an astronaut and bring that perspective that I had from, you know, working on these uh, previous missions. So what is training going to look like? Do you know yet? Like, where is it? It's uh, two years of training, I understand. What kinds of things will you be learning and, and doing? Yeah, the next two years will be very busy. Um, most of our training will occur here in Houston. But the, the big blocks of it will be for the non-pilots like myself. We'll get to learn how to fly. We'll get to practice spacewalks in the neutral buoyancy lab, which is a big pool where we get to test out what it's like to perform an extravehicular activity. We'll get some language training. Uh, we'll get some specialized training. There'll be geology training in there. And just getting to learn about so many different things that are necessary for you know longer duration space flight. Have you learned any Russian yet? Because I understand you have to know Russian to serve on the International Space Station. And I know you don't know what your mission might be, but um, have you started learning Russian? That is correct. We do need to learn how to speak Russian. And I think I saw in my calendar that this Friday will be my introduction to Russian and we'll uh, oh, wow. you know, go forward from there. So <laughs> looking forward to learning a new language. <laughs> is there anything, any part of training that you're uh, most looking forward to to being able to experience? Um, I think one thing that I've always wanted to do is learn how to fly. And so I'm excited to, you know, learn, especially in this environment um, where you're learning from the instructors, you're learning from your peers, and you know how you might be applying that knowledge someday. So that's an aspect of this that I'm really looking forward to, as well as some of the you know, exploration systems. And we're about to learn some of the ISS, the, the space station operations and robotics. Sounds like a, a fantastic training program and can't wait to know more about it. 
So NASA is taking on some really ambitious projects right now. The agency intends to send people back to the moon for the first time since 1972. If the Artemis mission stays on its timeline, that would be mid-2027. You still have a couple years of training uh, to go. But this is a moment where we're looking at, you know, the moon, Mars, you know, maybe some other really exciting things happening for NASA. How does it feel to be a part of this program right now at this moment? This is such a key moment in human spaceflight. Um, as you mentioned, we've had you know continuous operations on the International Space Station for almost 25 years, and that is a great platform for testing out science and technology and making observations of the Earth. As a geologist, of course, I'm looking forward to exploration of the Moon and Mars and what that might tell us about how our solar system formed and evolved, trying to answer questions like, when and where did life arise in the solar system? Was Mars habitable? Those types of questions. And there's a lot that we can learn uh, by sending humans to these locations. If your uh, commanders are not listening and we can pretend like you can choose which mission you would like to be on, uh, where would you want to go? I mean, Mars or, or the moon or, or where? Like, wh- what would you love to ideally get to go and do? At this point, they all sound amazing. It would be such an honor to serve on any of those. Do they teach uh, politics at this uh, two-year training as well? <laughs> uh, not that I'm aware of, but at this point, I'm just still in, you know, absorbing the fact that this is even happening. I'm in disbelief that I'm here and just so excited. I know that you are in the middle of a lot of, um, you know, this this process, this selection process, and, and this is all going on at the same time. But we have some big geology news out of Mars, this uh, leopard rock that had what some think might be evidence of ancient microbial life from Mars. I mean, any like reaction just from the geology nerd side of you to seeing what we're learning about the history of potentially life on Mars? This is so cool. This has been such a great week for Mars exploration. You know, we keep getting one step closer to that, like, convincing evidence that there was life on the red planet. And, you know, the observations that we've gotten from the Perseverance rover, from the Curiosity rover, before that, the Mars exploration rovers, each are building on each other. And you can sense that, like, we're getting closer to those answers um, and obviously would love to get those rocks back here on Earth so we can understand them better. Do you have any message for other second graders who might hear this and similar to you kind of have their moment of, hey, you know, if Lauren can do this, maybe I can too. And any advice for people out there who still want to dream and maybe want to dream to be an astronaut someday? I would say never give up on that dream, right? Nothing is impossible. Here I am, this dream I've had since I was in second grade. I think I feel very lucky to have found something that I love doing. And so I would encourage you to pursue many different things. There's so many different backgrounds and experiences that we need to contribute to human spaceflight and you know, just robotic and human exploration of the solar system. So find something that you love doing and pursue that and you know, hope to see you in space someday. Lauren Edgar is an astronaut candidate announced this week, one of a very select few that will be in training for the next couple of years at NASA. And she attended Skyline High School in Sammamish. Thank you very much, Lauren, for speaking, especially to the Seattle area audience who's going to be rooting you on as you pursue your astronaut career. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. The support, especially from the hometown, really means a lot. Uh, And I'm just so excited and honored to be here. Thanks for listening to SoundSide. And hey, this show is only possible because listeners support us. If you are able to give right now, check out the show notes for a link to donate. And don't forget, you can listen live on KUOW 94.9 FM Seattle at noon and 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday or anytime online at KUOW.org.